are so glad that you're able to join us right here on the holiday edition of The No Zone. That's right. Now, this is a place where we have lots of fun while we learn. I am Janet. I am Charlie. And I am Marara. Rawr! And we are so glad that you could join us today. Um, wait, wait, wait a minute. Where's everyone? Oh, Marara, I don't know if you know this, but it's the holidays. Yes, meaning that we are going to be looking at some of the best bits from Term 1. Now, that sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. Yes, it will be. And starting next week, we're going to have a brand new holiday episode every week, which will mean brand new holiday games. Hey, so first up, how about we go back and see how we met some of our friends like Mr. Zippo. It's the very first episode of The Play House. What? Excuse me, but why is it always me? Okay, come on, that's not fair. And Marie started. Let someone else let someone else do it. Thank you, brother, but I can defend myself. Now who will be the first to seek? Alright, since none of you will volunteer, I'll be it first. But don't get too comfortable because I'll catch you all in no time. Come on, I'll show you where to hide. Thanks, but I'm going to hide in that empty house. What? Haven't you heard that house is haunted? Thanks, but let me do it my way, okay? Okay. Got you! Not fair, you must have been peeping. heaven you saved me saved you what are you talking about i went to hide in there and i saw zach you were hiding in the haunted house did you see a monster what did you see in there i saw something but i don't know what it is now why is everybody standing about instead of playing whose turn is it Shh. something happened to zach he was hiding in the haunted house all right that's enough i'll take care of whatever scared you no Wait, what are you doing? It's not safe to go there. Well, I'll join him. Me too. <sighs> Boys. Hello? Is there anyone in here? What has happened? Who closed the door? Please, let's go out. What do you think you're doing in my house? What are you doing? Are you trying to get us in trouble? I'm just greeting whatever it is. Hello? Show yourself, you ghost. I am not ah! a ghost. Oh, stop, 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 stop. Oh, stop. Finally, you stop making that awful noise. Now listen, this is my house and you are intruding into my privacy and that is not polite. So you're not going to eat us? Ah. I do not eat children. Wow, so what do you like? Ah, some peace and quiet. And by the looks of this, I am not going to get any. Hi, it's me. I'm Zach and these are my friends. Mm, I remember you. You could not keep it by yourself, huh? You had to go and get the rest of them. Do you have magical powers? Ah. Out. Out. Out before I do something that you will regret. Out! But we just want to be your friends. I was fine without friends. 
especially human friends like you who make a lot of noise. Out, 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 out! Bye. Yeah, bye, and don't come back. It's really sad that that thing didn't want to make friends with us. We could have had so much fun. Yeah, like learning new magic tricks. Hey, Anne Marie, since you like to read books so much, have you ever seen such a thing in books? Maybe it might help us understand. No, I don't know what that was. And maybe it's fine that we're not friends because I think it was rude of him to chase us like that. Maybe you are the one who are, wrong, who are rude by forcing ourselves into us like that. I don't think we gave him much respect. So now what do we do? Yeah, what do we do? loves presents, so we'll buy thing a present. Yeah. yeah. Wait, but what do we take him? We don't know what he likes. I got it. We can take him sweets. Everyone likes sweets. That's it then. Thing will become our friend and then he can teach us new tricks and things. Yeah. Guys, what's going on? I've been hiding for a long time. Walk with me and I will explain it to you. Wait, don't do that. Let's wait for him to welcome us into his house. Yes, and when he opens the door, let's greet him politely. Hello, sir. Now, what is it? Did you forget something? Yes, uh, we wanted to give you this gift and say we are sorry. I beg your pardon? We realized we were a little rude earlier. Just please uh, request us to be your friend thing. Did, did you call me... Did, did you call me thing? Sorry, we just don't know who you are. Well, my name is Mr. Zippo, okay? Now, I'll accept your gifts as well as your apologies. But after that, you must leave. But Mr. Zippo, why don't you want us to be your friend? Oh, uh, well, okay. Um, I'll, I'll tell you the story. Now, a long, long time ago, I was so happy living in Egypt with my friends, the mummies. But then, one day I woke up to a rude awakening. Some people had come to take away the treasure. They even took away my mummy friends. I'm telling you, I was so afraid for my life. I didn't know if they were also going to take me. And so, ever since that day... But we promise we won't steal anything from you. We'll even buy you gifts every day if you allow us to be your friend. Now, wait, wait a minute. You should not make friends by buying them gifts. True friends treat each other with respect and kindness, and not gifts. Thanks for the advice, Mr. Zippo, but we would really like to be your friend. Please! Well, 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 well. Okay. Yeah! Oh. Thanks! Okay, 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 wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. But you can't come here all the time because I need my peace and quiet, okay? Yeah! All right! Yay. Oh, it was really great catching up with the gang, wasn't it? Oh, yes, it definitely was. <laughs> oh, I love Mr. Zippo. Well, that's good to hear, Mara. And now, actually, it's time for us to catch up with Teacher Pendle. It's time for Cool Words. Hello, everyone. Hello, Teacher Pendle. Welcome to Cool Words. Now, I'd like us to begin by revising colors. Now, on the board, I have lots of colors. Oh, oh Teacher Pendle. Yes, Marara. The board looks very colorful. Aha, uh -huh, that's a very good observation, Marara. Now, who can tell me what colorful means? 
Yes, Nicole? There are lots of different colors. Hmm, that's a very good answer. Colorful can mean different colors, but it can also mean that the colors are very bright and cheerful. Now, let's see if we know all these colors. So let's say them out loud together. The first one. Blue. Aha. Uh -huh. Very good. Next green. one. Green. green. Excellent. This one? Red. Very good. How about this one? White. Next one? Orange. Well done. The next one? Yellow. Excellent. And this one here? Pink. Pink. This one? Gray. Gray. And the last one? Black. Okay, well done, all of you. Now, earlier on, Nicole used the word different. Now, on the board, we've got two words, same and different. Now, who can tell me what same means? Yes, Marvin? When two things are similar. Mm -hmm, that's a very good answer. We use the word same when talking about two or more things that have something in common. For example, if we look at this square and this triangle, what can we say are the same about them? Yes, Jeanette? They are the same color. Mm -hmm, that's very good. Both are red. So we say they are the same color. Now, who can tell me what is different about them? Just observe them. What is different about them? Yes, Roy? They are different shapes. That's an excellent answer. They are different shapes because one is a triangle and one is a square. Now, who can give me another example using same and different. Oh, 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 Chapendo. Yes, Marara. My brother and I are from the same family, but we are of different ages. Aha, uh -huh, that's a very clever answer, Marara. Oh, well, thank you, Teacher Pendo. <laughs> You're welcome. That was really useful. It was great to, you know, revise our colors and then use them to describe our environment. I know, I love the outdoors with the green trees, the blue sky and the big yellow sun. Well, Mara, then you are definitely going to love what we have next even more. Oh, definitely. We are going to go and join up with my Speedy and see where he is going to be taking us. It's time for Out There. Hey, have you ever woke up to birds chirping? Their sound is very pleasant to wake up to. Birds range in sizes and colors. There are thousands of different types of birds in the world. Today we are going to have fun as we learn more about these amazing animals. Come on, good people. Come on with me. My friend Mwai tells me that this room in the Nairobi National Museum holds a detailed display of not only the Kenyan birds, but also the birds from East Africa. Many birds are different, and that makes them perfect for everyone to enjoy watching them. Birds are part of our environment, and just like flowers, they come in all sorts of colors. Look at this one! Isn't it beautiful? <laughs> I love it! Some birds can be shy, others very clever, others very outgoing and active. What really makes birds different from other animals? Is it their pretty colors? No! Is it their bill or beak? No! Is it their eggs? No! Is it their wings? No! Then what is it? Feathers! All birds have feathers, and they are the only animals that do. Feathers do many jobs for the birds. They keep them warm, 
Wing feathers allow them to fly. Their wings are similar to an aeroplane's wings, which help them to move easily through the air. All birds have wings. But did you know that not all birds can fly? For example, the ostrich. An ostrich cannot fly, but it is a very fast runner. It can even outrun a horse. Also, did you know that ostriches lay giant eggs? One ostrich egg can weigh as much as 24 chicken eggs. Hey, look, there are so many. How do you get to tell one bird from the other? There are different types of birds and they come in all sizes. Birds are also known for their massive migrating patterns. Some birds will travel long distances in search of food, water and breeding sites. Some birds feed on plants and others eat fish, snakes and even other birds. Birds, just like us, are grouped into families. Waterfowls. These are birds that live on or near water. They include swans, geese, and ducks. All waterfowls have webbed toes, enabling them to move swiftly through the watery environment. They also have long necks and narrow pointed wings. Another group is the birds of prey, like hawks, eagles, and owls. Since birds have no teeth, they use their beaks. The shapes of their beaks vary depending on the type of food they eat. Birds use their beak to gather food, feed their young, and drink water. Another group are the scavengers. For example, the vultures and the marabou stalk. These are birds that feed on dead or injured animals, and by doing so, they clean the environment. Domesticated birds. These are birds kept at home. For example, chicken, guinea fowls, and turkeys. Other domestic birds are the pet birds, like parrots, quails, and doves. The nectar feeders. These are birds that feed on nectar from flowers. The weaver birds, my favorite. This bird got its name from its very creative way of doing its nest. The different types of nests that birds build and use are determined by the types of birds and the surrounding environment. Nests vary in size, shape, and material. Some birds lay eggs inside mounds that they have built from materials such as leaves, twigs, soil, and grass. Most birds do this by using their feet and beaks. Now, children, what can you do to help protect the different bird species and where they live? It can be easy. Let's protect the environment. Goodbye, good people. See you. I love Maspidi's adventures. Mm, I know what you mean, Mara. And hey, please remember that during the holiday episodes, Maspidi does not stop because he'll be taking us to some brand new places. That is right, Janet. But right now, it's time for us to continue with our revision and visit up with Teacher Pendo as she helps us on Hot Numbers. Welcome to Hot Numbers. Now in our last lessons, we have been focusing on numbers and their place values. Yes, Teacher Pendo, we have looked at units, tens, and we have also looked at hundreds. Thank you, Marara, for reminding us. Now today, I'd like us to begin by doing some more counting. One, two, three, four, uh, Marara, five, Marara, hold six, on, hold on. Seven. Now, counting is really important because it helps us learn our numbers. But as well as counting forwards, a good way to make sure we know our numbers is to count backwards. Backwards? Yes, Marara, it's not too difficult. So all of us, I would like us to count starting from 20 to 11. And remember to join in at home. Now, Marara, will you start us off? Yeah, yeah. Okay. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11. Well done.
Japan, everyone. Oh, Japan, yes. that was so easy. Okay, now let's make it a bit trickier. Now let's try counting backwards in ones, but using three digit numbers. What, well, Japan, though? Yes, Marara. Now that is so difficult. Not to worry, I think you'll be able to manage it. Okay, and remember it's okay to make mistakes, it's just important that we try. Oh, okay, thank you to Japendo. You're welcome. Now let's count from 290 down to 280. And remember to join in at home. So let's start. 290, 289. 288, 287, 288, 287, 287, 285, 285, 286, 286, 287, 287, 287, 287, 287, 287, 287, I have a place value chart. Now, who can tell me what number this is? Yes, Linus? 111. 111. <laughs> well done. Now, we can see that 100 is bigger than 110 and is bigger than the 1. Now, do you all understand? Yes! Great. Now, I've got some more examples on the board. Now, I'd like you to take it in turns to tell me what numbers they represent. So, first up. Yes, John? 265. 265. Well done. And the next one? Yes, Patricia? 887. Eight, Sorry? 87. 87. Well done. Okay, and the next one? Yes, Ray? 409. 409. Well done. And the last one? Oh, it's Japan. It's Japan. Yes, Marara. Um, that is 310. Aha, well done. 310. Well done, all of you. <coughs> now, who can tell me what an abacus is? Yes, Linus. An abacus is for counting. That's right. Now on the board, I have some pictures of some abacuses showing hundreds, tens and ones. Now I'd like you to tell me how many hundreds, tens and ones there are in each picture and what number it represents. Now who wants to go first? Yes, Linus? 523. 523. You're right. Now, what about the next one? Yes, Patricia? 184. 184. Excellent. And the last one? Yes, John? 967. 967. Perfect. Well done, everyone. Oh, did you pendo? Yes, Marara. I really feel like I understand place value charts now. Aha, uh -huh, that's good to know, Marara. And remember, practice makes perfect. Well, we've reached the end of today's hot numbers lesson. Be sure to join us next time for more fun with the numbers. That revision was really cool, and it was great to learn about place value tables again. Absolutely, Charlie. It's great that we're practicing how to, you know, count. One. Two. Oh, well, it's time for us to take a short break, but do not go away because we'll be back very soon. That's right. So do not change the channel because we have a lot of great stuff coming up right here. So, see you in one, two, three. <laughs> Welcome back to the No Zone. This is a special revision episode. Looking back at some of the fantastic things we have showed you in Term 1. That's right, Marara. And hey, do you know who has been one of my favorite new friends in Term 1? I know, I know, I know. Um, it's... Uh... 
me? Marara, I, uh, Marara, I meant new friends. Um, um, All right, I'll give you a clue. She knows a lot about our planet. Oh. Dunia. It's Dunia, isn't it? That's a bingo. Welcome back to Our World with me, Dunia. Today, we are going to explore one of our five senses. Try and guess which one it is. We need our eyes to do it. We use it to know where we are going and what we are doing. X Sing We use our eyes to see every day until we go to sleep and close our eyes to let them rest. So, what else is seeing useful for? It helps us not bump into things. Ouch! It lets us see people's expressions like my friend Steve here. Can you guess how he's feeling by just seeing his face? Have a go! Angry? Scared? Sad? And my favorite, happy. We see big things. Small things. Cute things. Did you know that dogs are thought to see in black and white? That is something else we are lucky to see. Colors. Okay, so let's take a walk through my garden and see how many different colors we can find. Orange. Pink. Purple. Blue, green, brown, and white. Wow, so many beautiful colors. Next time you are outside, see if you can find all the colors of the rainbow. So that's red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, and pink. We also use our eyes to read. For example, road signs. Here are some important road signs that people need to see to be safe on the road. This one means pedestrian crossing. When you see this sign, it means it is a good place to try and cross the road. Make sure the car has come to a complete stop so you can walk safely across the road. This sign is telling drivers to be careful of the bump. When the drivers see this, they can slow down and drive over the bump safely. Now here is an important one. This sign tells drivers that children will be crossing here. They are usually found near a school. You still have to make sure the cars have stopped before crossing because some drivers are careless and don't stop. Now, this one we all should know. Stop! This sign tells drivers on the road to completely stop. How about this one? This sign is telling drivers to be aware of a bend or a curve in the road ahead so they can slow down and stay safe. So, you see, without our eyes, you could not see any of these signs. 
Make sure you use your eyes well and always look for warning signs. I've got a funny game for you to play. Sammy and Mary are going to show you how it's done. Sammy has to draw a picture with at least three different things. So he draws a house, a tree and a person. Then Mary puts on his blindfold and makes sure he cannot see. Sammy now has to try and draw the same picture but with no sight. Oh dear Sammy, what is that? See if you can do any better. It's harder than it looks. See you next week for more on Our World. See ya! Dunia is certainly a fantastic addition to the Nozon family. Yes, she is. She always has something really important to teach us. Well, I don't know who is more clever than the other. Dunia or Teacher Pendo? Hmm. Um... You know what, Mara? Hey, I think they're both very clever women. Yeah, that's actually true. Speaking of which, it's time for us to go and enjoy some more revision with Teacher Pendo. It's time for Cool Words. Hello and welcome to Cool Words. Now to start us off, I need two volunteers to help me in our first activity. Now I would like you to count these objects on the table and tell me how many there are. Now one of you should count the pencils and the other one should count the exercise books. So who would like to go first? Yes, Timothy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are eight pencils on the table. Mm -hmm, very good. There are eight pencils on the table. Well done. And what about the exercise books, Emmanuel? One, two, three, four, five, six. There are six books on the table. There are six exercise books on the table. Now, from these numbers, it is easy to see which objects are more. Therefore, there are more pencils than exercise books on the table. Okay, now let's have another example. Sheila, please count for us the rulers. One, two, three, four, Five. Mm -hmm. There are five rulers on the table. Excellent. There are five rulers on the table. Now, Alex, will you count for us the rubbers? Yes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There are seven rubbers on the table. Okay, very good. There are seven rubbers on the table. Now, can somebody make a sentence using more than to say which objects are more? Oh, oh Shepardo. Yes, Marara. Uh, there are more rulers than rubbers on the table. There are more rulers than rubbers on the table. Excellent. Well done, Marara. Now, next, let's look at these two glasses and tell me what you see. Timothy? One glass is almost full of juice, while the other has very little juice. Uh -huh, that's correct. Now, from that, can somebody use more than to show this difference? Yes, Emmanuel? There is more juice in the first glass than in the second glass. Okay, very good. All right. Now, what is it, Marara? Uh, uh, Teacher Pendo, I have a question. Uh -huh. Now, why didn't Emmanuel say there are more juice in the glass? I think, uh, 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 well, I think I get it now. It would not sound right. <laughs> That's right, Mara. It's good that you spotted your mistake very early. Now, we do not say there are more juice because we cannot count juice like we did earlier with the pencils and rubbers. Is that clear? 
Yes, teacher Brenda. Okay, there is also another way of saying it. Now, this time I am going to use less than. Now, we can say there is less juice in the second glass than in the first glass. Now, note that less than is used when we are talking about things that are uncountable. Now, who would give me examples of such things? Yes, Sheila? Sugar. Sugar. Well done. Someone else? Yes, Alex? Fla. Fla. Excellent. Someone else? Oh, 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 teacher Pendo. Yes, Marara. Um, ink? Ink. Yes, it would definitely be very difficult to count ink. Someone else? Yes, Timothy? Water. Water. Excellent. Well done, all of you. I learned so much during Cool Words this time. Me too, and I'll definitely be putting more than and less than to good use. Oh, that's great to know. But right now, it's time for us to put a different section of our brain into action. It's time for us to get very, very creative. That's right, Charlie. It's time for Creative Zone. Welcome to Creative Zone, and as always, we have lots of fun lined up for you today. And we are going to have fun with poetry today. Now, I'll suggest that you grab a pen and paper for today's lesson. We have a friend, and she is called Mwende. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Mwende. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm okay. I'm okay. Welcome to Creative Zone. Thank you. Thank you. Well, hello everyone. I know you are wondering what a poem is. Well, a poem is art using words to talk about any subject or feeling. Many poems have a rhyme and they work in verses. Okay, now that sounds great, but one question. Uh -huh. Can you use any word to make a poem? Yes, you can. I mean, you don't have to use hard words. You can use the simplest words as possible. I think I'll need a pencil and paper for this. So you go on and I'll catch up with you later, okay? Okay. All right, bye. Bye. All right, friends. Why don't we try writing a simple rhyming poem out of the buzzwords for today? That is happily, quickly, poem, story, and shot. So why don't we write down the words and then decide on words that rhyme. Now on your sheet of paper, write down a sentence that ends with quickly. For example, the little girl walked to the shop quickly. Got that? Then the next sentence can end with the word happily. For example, she skipped and jumped and played happily. You see, these two sentences ended with words that rhyme, quickly and happily. Next, write a new sentence with words that rhyme. She bought a cake in the shape of a lorry. And end with a word that rhymes, for example. And that is the end of our lovely little story. See, all the words at the end rhyme. Quickly, happily, lorry, story. Listen to the poem again. The little girl walked to the shop quickly. She skipped and jumped and played happily. She bought a cake in the shape of a lorry. And that is the end of our lovely little story. Now, how easy was that? Now, you can try and do what I've done today. Write simple sentences and make sure that the end rhyme. And it really doesn't matter, just as long as you're having lots of fun. That is all for me for today. But if you want the chance to get your poem read on the show, then get writing and send it to the following address. The No Zone Poetry Competition, Media Company, PO Box 2150502, Karen, Nairobi. So keep having fun and try writing a poem or two. See you soon. Bye.
is so good to get creative, whether it's singing, it's artwork, or it's dancing. And I am great at singing. Oh, do you want to hear me sing? No. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mara, we actually do not have time. Yeah. Hey, for you at home, we hope you find time to do something creative during the holidays. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's cool, Mara, it's cool. But right now, let's, uh, let's go and have more number fun with Teacher Pendle. It's time for Hot Numbers. Hello everyone and welcome to Hot Numbers. Hello Teacher Pendo. We've all been having a great time counting numbers. We even learned how to write our numbers in words. Um, do you mean we are not counting today Teacher Pendo? No Marara. We now know how to count so today we are going to learn addition. Oh, what? Addition? Yes, addition. This is the plus sign and shows that we are talking about addition adding numbers together. Oh, please, Teacher Pendo, explain. Okay, Marara, imagine you had five sweets in your pocket and then I decided to give you another five. How many sweets would you have? Um, that would be 10 sweets. Mm -hmm, you're right. Now, please, can you explain how you got that answer? Well, I put the sweets together and they became 10. Aha, uh -huh, very good. When we put numbers together, we call it addition. It's easy when the numbers are small, but it gets harder when the numbers are bigger. Now, here in one hand, I have six pencils. And in this other hand, I have seven pencils. Now, how many pencils do I have all together? Yes, Tonette? 13. Aha, that is right. Now I can count from seven and continue counting until I have counted all the pencils. So seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Okay, now I have four pencils in one hand and six in the other hand. All right, now count from six. How many pencils do I have? Yes, Joseph? 10. 10, okay, so that's correct. So six, let's count together. Seven, Seven eight, eight, nine, nine ten. 10. Very good. Now this time I have nine pencils in one hand and I have seven pencils. Let me just put seven pencils in the other hand. Okay, so I have nine pencils in one hand and seven pencils in the other hand. How many pencils do I have all together? Todd, do you want to give this a try? Sixteen. Sixteen, okay. So always start from the biggest number, in this case, nine. So let's count together from nine. Nine, ten, ten, ten eleven, eleven, twelve. twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16. Very good. Okay, let's do one more. So I have in one hand 15 pencils and in another hand I have 8 pencils. Let me just get 8 pencils. All right, so that's all my pencils. Okay, so I have 15 pencils and I have 8 pencils. Remember to count from the big number. So how many pencils do I have all together? Yes, Michelle? 23. 23, that's correct. Now let's count together from 15. So 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. Very good. Counting everything takes time. For example, what is 24 plus 25? Now notice how we use the plus sign to show it's an addition. Now there are two ways we can add these two numbers. Now we can first add the tens. Okay, so 20 plus 20, okay, which gives us 40. And then we add the ones, four plus five, which gives us nine, okay? And then we add the two numbers, 40 plus nine, which gives us 49. 
Wow, Teacher Fendo, you make it sound so simple. Uh -huh, thank you. Now the second way you can add the numbers is to write them in a column like this. Okay, so keep the numbers in their correct place values. Now the ones come under the ones and the tens under the tens. Okay, we then add the ones column first. Okay, so four plus five gives us nine. Okay, and the tens, two plus two gives us four. And so we get our answer 49. Okay, now let's do some few examples. Now, who would like to try the first one here? 13 plus 15. Who wants to write that for us? Yes, Tonette? Mm -hmm. So what do you get? 28. Very good. We get 28. So when we add the ones together, 3 plus 5, we get 8. And the tens together, 1 plus 1 gives us 2. That gives us 28. Very good. Now the next one, 22 plus 31. Who wants to try this one? Yes, Joseph. 22 plus 31. So we add the ones first. Mm -hmm. And then we add the tens. Mm -hmm. So what do we get? 53. 53, well done. So when we add our ones together, 2 plus 1 gives us 3, and then the tens, 2 plus 3 gives us 5. Excellent. Moving on to the next one, 12 plus 26. I'll, I'll try. Go right ahead. Well, you said we should always add the first column, which is ones. Mm -hmm. So 2 plus 6 is 8. Mm -hmm. And then move to the next column. Mm -hmm. That is 1 plus 2, which gives us 3. Mm -hmm. So the answer is 38. Well done, Marara. And you've explained very nicely. Okay. Very good. Now moving on to the next one, 33 plus 14. Who wants to do this for us? Yes, Todd. 33 plus 14. Bearing in mind about adding the ones first and then adding the tens. Mm -hmm. Add the ones together. Three plus four. Forty-seven. Forty-seven, well done. Okay, and the last one, who wants to give it a try? 18 plus 20. Yes, Michelle, go right ahead. 18 plus 20. Then add your ones together. Okay. What do you get? It is 38. Mm -hmm, very good. 38. All right, so when we add 8 plus 0 gives us 8, and then 1 plus 2 gives us 3, so our answer is 38. Well done, all of you. You've done really well, and that was an introduction to addition. Thank you so much, Teacher Pendo. I love adding up. Especially when you go shopping. <laughs> very tricky, Lion, very tricky. <laughs> all right, but right now, it's time for us to go and hear an amazing story. That's right, and remember to look out for Queasy Quiz at the end, who is going to ask you some questions. Queasy Quiz, Queasy Quiz, Queasy Quiz, Queasy Quiz. This is the story of monkeys missing marvels. Enjoy. 
One day, Monkey was very excited to be going to school because he'd been given brand new stationery by his dad. He had a ruler, a, a pencil, and of course a sharpener for his pencil, all tucked safely in his school bag. Happily running into the school compound, he was desperate to show his friend the hyena what was in his bag. This is my pencil, this is my ruler, and this is my sharpener, said the monkey. They are real marvels, said the hyena, pleased for his friend. During the morning break, monkey and hyena quickly left the classroom and headed for the playground. On his desk, monkey left his pencil, his ruler, and his sharpener. He didn't need it whilst he was playing football with hyena in the playground. But when morning break was over and Monkey returned to the classroom, his ruler was gone. His pencil was still there and so was the sharpener. What was he going to use to measure now? Monkey got very cross and jumped up and down in rage. <laughs> hyena tried to calm his friend holding him down to stop him from jumping. Calm down, monkey. I'm sure it will turn up. Monkey wasn't so sure. As lunchtime came, monkey and hyena headed quickly to the school canteen. On his desk, monkey left his pencil and his sharpener. He didn't need them whilst he was eating his lunch with his friend. But when lunch was over, and the monkey returned to the classroom, his sharpener was gone. Only his pencil remained, but how was he going to keep it sharp? Monkey got very cross and jumped up and down with rage. <laughs> Hyena tried to calm his friend, holding his tail to stop him from jumping. Monkey turned to Hyena. Maybe you took my stationery, he said. Don't be silly, monkey. I've been with you the whole day, haven't I? said the hyena. Monkey nodded his head. Hyena whispered into monkey's ear, don't worry, I have a plan. At afternoon break, monkey and hyena didn't go to the playground to play football. Instead, they stayed hiding in the classroom. Both monkey and hyena hid under the desk. The pencil was on the desk. Before too long, a bird appeared and flew in through the open window, looking around. The bird quickly picked up Monkey's pencil and flew out of the window. Just inside the school compound, they spotted the bird flying to its nest, hidden behind the school sign. Monkey and Hyena waited until the bird flew off again and went to look inside the nest. Sure enough, inside was Monkey's ruler, his pencil, and his sharpener. Taking back his property, Monkey and Hyena happily walked through the compound and back into the classroom, ready for their afternoon lesson. Monkey realized that he should have never blamed Hyena and that he should have been more careful with his stationery. Now, Whenever he leaves the classroom, he puts them safely in his school bag. To thank Hyena, Monkey lets Hyena use his pencil and his sharpener and ruler whenever he likes. The end. From the story zone, this is Crazy Quiz. What was the first item that the monkey lost? The first item that the monkey lost was a roller. Where did monkey and hyena hide? Both monkey and hyena hid under the desk.
Marara, how many questions did you answer correctly? Oh, come on, Charlie. All of them. I am a very clever liar. Oh. Indeed you are, Mara. Well, we have run out of time for today's special revision episode. Yeah, so thank you very much for joining us. We hope that you had fun. And we will see you next week for the first of our brand new holiday episodes. That's right, because we've got some very entertaining games. What? Did you say new games? Yes. Whoa, I can't wait! All right, so there'll be new games, there'll be some old ones, but there will always be laughter, learning, and a lot of fun. So we'll see you next time right here on the No Zone. Shall we say goodbye, everyone? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, why Let's not? Try. Bye! Bye.